Hi, thank you for joining us today. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Welcome to Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Remnant Nation Radio is a prophetic and poetic view of the sojourning bride of Christ in the world today. Hi, thank you for joining me. This is Dina at Remnant Nation Radio and NewWinePouring.com. Well, I have an article that I want to share with you. I'm going to do an audio reading of it. And if you have any questions or comments or something you'd like to share, after hearing this audio, you can correspond with me on the website, NewWinePouring.com with one W. You just look at the top where it says Contact Us. You click on it. It'll take you to this correspondence page that I'm talking about. Share whatever you'd like, and I would love to hear from you. So let's go into the reading of this article. It's called America's Home Invasion, and it was published March 2016. Actually, March 18, 2016. Deuteronomy 28, 45, and 48. It starts out with this scripture. The foreigners who live among you will get stronger and stronger, and you will get weaker and weaker, Foreigners will lend money to you, but you will not be able to lend to them. They will be like the head, and you will be like the tail. You had plenty of everything, but you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a pure heart, so you will serve the enemies the Lord sends against you. My husband left the house at 5.44 a.m. February 8, 2016. I was in our upstairs bedroom working on my website. This was very unusual because normally I'm downstairs with him every morning at this time. He came up the stairs to say goodbye before heading out the door on a trip he was taking. I heard the front door close in the living room behind him. The only light on in our room was from the iPad I was working on. I turned it off and was surprised on how utterly dark it was on the entire second floor. I waited for my eyes to adjust, but it didn't change the pitch blackness in the room. I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. I thought this to be odd because we have several windows on that floor. I was so put off by how black it was in the room that I decided to go downstairs. Though I wasn't frightened by the darkness, it just seemed too dark, and so I wondered if David had turned off every light in the house, including the porch light, and I wanted to make sure the porch light was on. I reached over to grab my phone, but as I did, I heard a rustling down on the main floor and then the distinct sound of footsteps carefully walking up the stairs. I thought it must have been David, but I knew he would have called up to me if he had forgotten something and returned home. At this point, I began to slip into a harrowing realization that a stranger was in my house, whom I suspected didn't know I was there and couldn't see any better than I could. I grabbed my phone and slipped onto the wood floor beside the bed. It was cold, but at least I was hidden from the door on the other side. The footsteps continued more and more confident than I could tell. Whoever it was was standing at the top of the stairs. I could hear someone else was below him as the perpetrator entered my room. Somehow I knew they really thought the house was empty and didn't expect me to be there. Still, I had no idea what they would do to me if I was discovered. I prayed my phone would not turn on as it sometimes does randomly. The light would reveal my hiding place. I was now a victim of a home invasion. They had me. They had my life. But for God and his supernatural peace, I realized I was about to suffer one of the most horrifying crimes anyone could imagine. Once they're inside your home, they have already robbed you of the only place in this world that is your peace and security. They could have you held hostage for days, and they can ensnare those who come looking for you. Strangers in the house is never okay, and it never will be in any sense of the word. While on the floor, I calculated that they wouldn't be able to find the light switch in the room and would have to search for a while if they had a notion to turn it on. This gave me a moment to think. As the intruders shuffled around the top of the stairs, the next thing I know, without hesitation, 
I blurted out the words, pull the trigger, as loud as I could, as if I was speaking to someone else hiding in the darkness with me. I said it again, pull the trigger now. I could hear both of the intruders immediately begin to scramble down the stairs and out of the house. I heard them go out to the back door and through the garage, with the realization then that our garage door must have been left open, and that was how they entered the house. They came through the widest entryway in the home. Now I knew why my house. It was a crime of opportunity. I crept down the stairs carefully looking to see if the house was clear and then ran to the living room and looked out the window and watched a faded gold-colored sedan speed out of our driveway. That's when I realized the lights were on in the house after all and the outdoors hinted pre-dawn light. But why was the upstairs masked in such darkness? I walked back to the bottom of the stairs and turned on the stairwell lights and that is when things became even more shocking. A child of about two and a half years old was trying to walk down the steps. Dark hair, brown eyes, light brown skin. I realized then that the intruders had expected to use the house while thinking we were gone and was going to provide an habitation for themselves and the child for a few hours for food and other domestic services the house would provide. The little boy was abandoned and left behind in the confusion and terror of the surprised home invaders who found that their invasion of private property was about to be responded to forcefully, so it seemed. They were given no warning, no time to think. The fatal consequences for a stranger to walk into someone's home had them at every direction as far as they knew. On a hunch, I carefully opened the garage entry door, and sure enough, the garage door had been left wide open. More heart-stopping than all that would have been, had I not been cloaked in peace, was the presence of a stranger about the age of 55 years old standing in the middle of the garage under great duress because he wouldn't leave without the child and had been left behind by a car full of would-be intruders, whom, upon their departure, left without hesitation the old man and child to save their own skin." The older man standing in the garage began to weep and apologize and beg for the child. He kept saying, I need, I need. A man who looked like the child's grandfather with a well-trimmed mustache, not a transit type nor criminal looking you would imagine in a home invasion. His attire, mannerism, and English reflected someone acclimated to USA culture. However, again, as with the other knowings that I seemed to have in this ordeal, he was an illegal immigrant and the child was his grandchild. I reached out and took his hand, realizing the danger had passed, to calm him down, and then said, Well, what you need is Jesus. I felt the warmth of his hand and the dust of sheetrock powder that was on the floor of our recently sheetrocked garage as I reunited him with the child, now standing at my side. At that moment, instantly, the scene abruptly changed. I was back upstairs, moving out of the stiffness of what I began to realize was a vision-induced trance that fell on me moments after David left the house that day. Only twice in my lifetime before this have I had such an incredibly profound occurrence of a fully interactive, open-eyed vision that happened while I was awake. The difference with this one was that it was not preceded by a very heavy Holy Spirit-induced sleepiness. It did not play out like a movie, but even now feels like a real-life event had taken place. This type involved all my senses and included nothing that could tell me that I was not engaged in a real-time, real-life event. I was seeing no angels or demons or out-of-place sequences or objects to suggest it was a spiritual encounter. However, I was feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit and receiving words of knowledge that gave me a narrative of what this home invader's intent was throughout the encounter. I have no reason not to believe this man and child do not exist on this earth and that they were not in my house. It is biblical that living people can be encountered for the first time in a vision. It is also biblical that a future event or meeting can be supernaturally rehearsed before it actually is realized. What I believe this encounter to be is a parable of the existing illegal alien issue in America and what is ramping up concerning that issue. 
Will there be a self-deportation movement of illegals in this land? Will it be in response to a cry after midnight piercing the darkness of those who hide in its shadows? A trance is described in the book of Acts 22:17. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying at the temple, I fell into a trance. I understand why these encounters don't happen very often now. Simply, the human mind would not be able to take it. Thankfully, your activity and mobility is suspended, so you do not move about when this kind of vision does occur that engages all of your sensory perceptions. I am as descriptive as I can be on these things because the Lord has told me to teach as I go these operatives of the supernatural God we serve in Christ the Son. Intrusions, Invasions, and Occupations Shortly I began to understand this event was much like another I had five years ago. I saw South American children spilling into my lawn from the woods behind our house. This was in the spring of 2011. In that vision, which occurred after I thought I had awakened from sleep, was an Afghanistanian man and woman, both elderly, or so it seemed, sitting on my kitchen floor eating our food. A young woman, clearly had three children of different fathers, took up most of our living room. My husband turned to me in this sleeping vision and said, I will never be able to give you what I wanted to give you in our retirement. I understood at that moment that our country would be tax burdening the middle class, now known as the working poor, into impoverishment as a welfare state for all of these. In a dream, a year before the 2011 dream, I looked over the gulf and saw a woman in South America holding her children up to us. She was demanding that we send money to her. At this time, there was nothing new about illegal immigration. What was new was the broad and wide open door to come, much like the open garage door in this last encounter. These were all pre-warnings, as I believe this recent visitation is one also. There is anger in the land over these issues, and I believe, among other things, the illegal immigration issue is about to blow up beyond what we could ever have expected. It appears we are in real life struggles between good and evil where ground is lost and then gained, rather than a fatalist view that no one can change the outcome of these things happening in America. So we continue to pray for reversal of what seems is the inevitable. Regardless of what is inevitable, as gross darkness covers the earth and great darkness the people, God says, My light will shine upon you. To you will the Gentiles come. To you will kings bow in the brightness of your dawn. Isaiah 60, 1. What trigger will set off this chain reaction of events where in a moment of great darkness Americans are crying out for action as an act of self-defense? What is being said or what will be said that is causing those who have poured into this country illegally to run back out of it? Even if they were ready for a fight, they could not see who to engage and where that engagement would come from. In the vision, I was given wisdom on what to do and say in an impossible set of circumstances. Is God able to cause such a thing to happen, to convince illegals that a mass exodus would be better for them, at the same time accomplishing an humanitarian act of reuniting thriving families that have acclimated to American life? Could it be that the body of Christ's voice is raising up a command in the land and the call for an act of defense will be so shocking it will reverse this dangerous invasion put upon us because God's people have been in prayer. Those who would rather be caught at the border and left in a state of limbo and distress because of family ties or because of these children are reunited. It seems they are given some kind of amnesty. It appears that the garage was like a self-imposed attainment center for those who couldn't wouldn't leave voluntarily after prayer and seeking the lord this is what i was given to understand the vision that was so extraordinary that the grandfather part falls in the category as i see it of the macedonian call regarding a people in desperate need of god to help them as is described in acts now the following is what i'm getting out of this vision it is true that our home is our home, and regardless of whether or not we lock our doors or close our gates, no one has the right to enter our homes or walk through our property without being invited. We have laws that we don't even enforce. America has trespassing laws as well as immigration laws. It is a sin to break the laws of the land. God does not honor sin. Many who come to this country illegally suffer the consequences of a trespasser when those who have a right to do so enforce the law. 
They also suffer when their trespassing condition is held over them, and they become enslaved to those who use it to manipulate their condition of guilt. Much like how Satan enslaves us all under the puppet strings of sin, it is our fault we left our borders wide open. Still, illegal is illegal. Christian America must repent for the exploitation of laborers and sex trafficking that is connected to this, as well as various abuses of those whom have been blackmailed, who have complied to less desirable circumstances or situations or conditions out of fear of being reported or deported. Repent, loose the bonds of wickedness, because this immigration thing is about to blow up. Many, I believe, have been in repentance and in prayer this election year. While man is doing his thing, God is doing a God thing in spite of men. It is true that the intent of these trespassers is to enter into the country and use the benefit of citizenship in every way they can for themselves. They feel they are entitled to live as their neighbors do, and desperate times call for desperate measures as well. Per the vision, this is equivalent to breaking into a house that someone else worked hard to buy and use all that is in the house for their use without a vested interest in it. If they spill something on the floor and clean it up, do the dishes, or even replace the shampoo they used, still they are trespassing, and nothing they do changes that until they abide by the law. They are trespassers who have been exploited by evil because of their trespasses and shown mercy, grace, and kindness in spite of them. As a spirit-filled Christian in this dilemma, an unusual thing happened. My voice demanded an action to pull the trigger and to pull it now. Because a growing number of Americans do not know the intent or motives of those who do not belong in their home. It appears that God has gone up with a shout. His voice is the sound of a trumpet. Is God giving us this campaign season to promote a trembling spirit in the land that will drop the rod between sheep and goat intruders? Who would think such a thing to occur? Isaiah twenty-eight fourteen through 7 Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Okay, Washington, because you have said, When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone. Judgment also will lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the waters shall overflow the hiding place. I will do for you what I did in the mountain of Perazim, the mountain of breaks, breaches, and gaps. That's what Perazim means. I will do for you what I did in the mountain of breaks, breaches, and gaps. I will do a work, his work, a foreign work, bringing to pass an alien act. Isaiah twenty-eight twenty-one. Now, this is scripture. And I'm taking this, that there may be an alien act, uh, uh, that, that he will bring to pass an alien act. So it's a play on words. He said in his word that if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn from their wicked way. If we would repent and turn away from our wickedness, he said, I will hear from heaven and I will come and heal your land. And he'll turn around the things that have happened. And so many people have been praying. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're God of your word. And I thank you, you're turning this thing around. But the people need to respond to the Spirit of God and see these things spiritually. No man is going to save us. No man is going to help us. Only God has that ability. Only God has that power. But there are certain people that stand up for wickedness. And they don't stand up for life. And I know God can turn the face of the king any which way he wants. He can turn the faces of the leaders any which way he wants. Now therefore, be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. Okay? I mean, I see here what God wants to do. But if we're not careful, then the opposite is going to come down upon us. Our walls will remain down. America will be full of home invaders. This is the raw truth. We need to wake up. Only God can protect us. Now therefore be ye not mockers, lest your bands be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a consumption even determined upon the whole earth. As Americans need to repent, so do those who break the law to infiltrate her. 
But greed and lawlessness has no excuse on either side of the coin. On both sides of these offenses, the offending parties have been negatively impacted. Whatever is behind the human carnage in all of this will have its day in God's court. Trespassing is a misdemeanor, but treason is a high crime. The powers that be have not protected America, but for purposes of economy, personal gain, votes, enabling a very dangerous invasion across our borders. The suffering will have to be accounted for. This is exploitation, but all cannot be just forgiven. We don't know who has flooded across our borders. We can ask God to give us a spirit of wisdom in this derelict breach of security to accomplish the impossible. It may be that God shall spare with a Solomon's wisdom the children up to their grandparents who cannot abandon their families, who in this present environment is facing opposition and an unknown penalty behind the cry to pull the trigger like the grandfather standing in my garage, a man that appeared to be swept up in a set of circumstances beyond him. How did we get to this point in America? A spirit of madness and confusion. Now listen, a spirit of madness and confusion overtakes a land that gives free reign to homosexuality. In a dream prior to Obama's inauguration in 2009, not only did the Lord reveal to me the prominence the Clintons would have during Obama's presidency, but that a juvenile spirit of perversity was transferred over from the Clinton administration to the Obama administration that would come of age under his watch. We are so intoxicated in this land with perversity, we lie drunken. With our walls down, our gates open, and our doors ajar, desperation stand in the shadows, and murderers have entered therein, similar to the home invaders in the dream. If their presence had not been exposed with such a violent prospect, what would have become of me in the hands of those willing to abandon their own to the threat of violence? Who stands in the shadows now? They are not our friendly green card holders of yesterday. Crossing the border illegally are many hardened by the ravages of a land mutilated by drug cartels equal to ISIS. There is no question that terrorists are among them. That same spirit, ISIS, is the same spirit operating with these Mexican cartels. What they're involved in is witchcraft. A false religion is a false religion. There is no question that terrorists are among them that are flooding across our borders. We have a fundamental responsibility to our borders that we have failed at. America has been safe to occupy illegally by trespassers of all kinds, the good, the bad, the ugly. Her security lights have gone out. Her towers of strength have been reduced to rubble. She has no walls. From where will the watchmen watch? From where will they stand? Our garage door was never really open, nor were all the lights in the house really turned off. But America's greater door is wide open, and she is not burning the midnight oil of wisdom. However, it seems a cry has begun to be heard in the land, so unexpected, so earth-shattering, that it is sending shock waves. The darkness cloaks everyone in the threat of the unknown. To what degree will this issue ramp up this nation? The rhetoric has become frightening. Perhaps an exodus that only the anchored in will brave the gravity of the consequences. What can be shaken will be shaken. And that's for all of us. Hang on, folks. What can be shaken will be shaken. And believe me, if you're a child of God, you want to be shaken. Only that which can be shaken will be shaken. You want shaken. You want all this junk to come off of you. You want your mindset to be shaken off of you. You want the lies of the enemy to be shaken off of you. You want your distractions shaken off of you. You want to be able to see clearly and be a wide awake during this time. This is how people that are sleeping are going to be awakened by the shakings and the shakings and the shakings. Believe me, that is also a result of answered prayer, are the shakings. This cry to pull the trigger, pull it now, was directed toward the perpetrators of a home invasion of whom the Christian owner did not know who they were at the moment, nor what their intent would be at the moment. Perhaps the crisis of the times will cause the borders to be closed after a public outcry. 
Christians in America should continue to voice against the trespassers' invasion, for we do not know who they are. However, when the human side of it presents itself, there must be an expedient response to the petitioner in order to reunite or preserve intact families. Psalms 146.9 The Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. Amen and amen. I don't understand everything about what I was shown, but I know that God is a merciful God, and he cares for us. He cares for Mexico. He cares for America. He cares for his people, and he wants to deliver not only Americans from an invasion of darkness. I'm talking about the terrorism. He wants to embrace this country just as much as he wants to embrace Canada and Mexico and the people of Canada and the people of Mexico. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, God bless and thank you for joining us. Until we meet again.